All right, welcome everyone. Everybody that's here in person or virtually, thank you very much for participating in this presentation about window mounting. I would like to take the next 30 minutes to show you several different options, how windows can be mounted and how you can plan it and execute it properly. So we're gonna get started with one legal slide. That is also always part of my presentation. So you can either work in line with the BGB. So you have a five-year statute of limitations or VOB and that be four years statute of limitation. And I think that is something that everybody knows. And there's one contract or one paragraph that also exists and that always holds true. And that would be paragraph 199 in BGB. And it says that if your body, your life, or your livelihood is being endangered, the window builder is going to be responsible for 30 years. So that means if after 29 years, the window is falling out and there is a small child under it and it's breaking his leg, then you are still liable for that even after 29 years. And that's why I want to show you that, but there are also other points why, why you have to focus on that a little bit more. First of all, just some information. The rules that I'm introducing or these construction characteristics, they are in line with rules of technology and they are very often described as luxury mountain, but whatever is included here are the minimum requirements that you should have fulfill so that window mounting works like that. So it's not something that is luxury or anything like that. It's the minimum requirement that you have to have. Okay, so what has changed? Well, I know the statement of window builders, but we've always done it like that, is still gonna work today. And that may be true in many cases. However, specific when we talk about window mountings, a lot of things have changed. For example, we all know that today we have higher weights for things. In the past, it used to be double glass. Now it's triple glass and the elements are growing in size. And of course, that is even more weight. And based on this fact, the mounting doesn't work the same way as it did in the past. The second thing that also is very important is that also the walls aren't as strong as they used to be in the past. And of course, there's different stone and things like that. And you can just squish it with your finger. And with this light stone, you're supposed to have bigger elements that are mounted. And of course, that is a big task, a task that we need to think about and we need to find a solution for that. So now the most critical point would be how you put them in different layers. So it used to be something that was in the wall. Today they're already installation position. They're already in the installation. So now we need additional pieces. So usually it would be this little flap or whatever you want to call it. And because of that, there's another lever that is then sort of increasing the lever. And that means that we have high burdens and high loads that are actually there. A very simple case would be, and that is something that I got from Ferdinand Dreising. I found it on his website. He is an expert and he had this case right here. So it's this three piece facade element. So the foot console, there's this little steel piece and he wanted to use a screw to actually mount it like that. So that was his fixation point. And of course, we can imagine that that's not gonna work. It's a three piece element. Okay, so we're going to continue like that. So this is how they mounted it. So even if that was done properly, 
we don't even know if this mounting would have worked. Now, if we look at the different masonry types, then we have a great comparison here because we can see that the stones from earlier times have a pressure strength of 20 newton per square millimeter. So this corresponds to roughly two kilograms per square millimeter. Back then, this was all good. You could reasonably insert screws and they just held. And then Probably people just came up with the idea to say, okay, we're going to use perforated, perforated construction material, which already reduced the strength to 12 Newton per square millimeter. Then we had the first energy saving regulations kicking into gear. So there was the idea, right, how can we improve masonry overall? So this um, led to the addition of various concrete types where we have a little bit more than four newton per square millimeter. So again, a deterioration. Then we uh, also still worked with bricks, so which give us, but a certain type, which again are smaller than 12 newton per square millimeter. And now we want to uh, even want to save more energy. So you need an even lighter stone, which is a lightweight perforated brick. And this brings us to smaller than 800 gram per square millimeter in pressure strength of the stone. And this is where we want to attach our heavy windows to, just as we did in earlier days. Cannot work like this anymore, obviously. So I will give you a solution to the problem, how it is supposed to work. Um, so you. Um, at a new construction site, maybe you are familiar with this situation, and then you see those so-called half stones, um, or as we call them, profit breaks. I know from masonry producers that in principle they are delivered. However, the craftsmen working on the construction site don't know what to do with them. So I have a request for you. If you are working with lightweight perforated and you cannot find any additional soft bricks, then maybe you should uh, prevent any further construction. You should raise your concerns and then just go and make sure that this is actually um, not uh, built in the way um, as they planned it to because you will not be able to touch your window. So only if we are consistent in our claims if we say, okay, we'll not install our window until we have those soffit bricks installed, things will not change. So only then those people working on the construction side responsible for the piecing really will start to integrate them. If the stone wouldn't be here, then you have only this little chamber to attach your window. After that, you only have cavities, right? So now if we have this soffit brick, this half brick, then we have a thick chamber, a second thick chamber, and the first one. So we have a triple the strength. So this is already a solution that can help us, especially when it comes to load bearing. And we didn't change that much, or load transfer, and we didn't change that much in our approach, right? So here I have different installation situations that I want to share with you to uh, give you an overview of what the systems are, what makes sense, what's available on the market. And the smileys are only referring to the actual situation, so not the attachment systems or fixation systems, but we are comparing the different installation positions and we will see which systems are more suitable for which uh, position. Right. So let's say this is our default approach. What happens? if we extend it toward the edge outward or the opposite direction. So those are the screws that you can use. In principle, those screws are probably the ones that are used most frequently. You also have those basic screws. You have PVC dowels, various um, versions. And I will tell you in a minute when you can use which of those. Right. 
So with the window, we are approaching the edge of the masonry. So in the upper case, the direct attachment, direct fixation, so screw right through there, is sometimes not possible because depending on the stone used for the masonry and depending on the screw, we have certain margin um, tolerances that we need to adhere to. And usually we're talking about at least four centimeters. So if we were to use uh, a certain expansion anchor, for example, then we have to even calculate with 10 centimeters. So we need a tab, we need um, a different means, a bracket, so that we can ensure the um, distance that we have to maintain. Or you choose a screw which can operate on um, a lower edge distance or smaller edge distance. Right. So we have no additional masonry on top of the window that uh, can protect the window against driving rain. Then we have the lighting situation, which is significantly improved. And so, and probably I, did, I need an additional uh, element to um, install the window. And we also have to take into account the surface temperature on the interior side of the window element because there we always need to have 12.6 degrees. Right, if you go for this option, this, you could use, for example, this system. So, ha you, so you have those PVC brackets, which are drilled through the window frame. They have an opening, which is then inserted into the frame. And then the screw is driven into the PVC part, if not all the way through the masonry. This works quite well. We already tested this at our academy. So it seems suitable. And you also have at the bottom a bracket for load transfer. So we go even one step further outward. So we're talking about installation into insulation with taps. So we are in a worse situation than we were before because I think this is the most critical situation when it comes to um, fixing. We are located, as I said, in the installation. We have a lever and we somehow need a, an element with which we can attach the window. Once again, if you have those lightweight perforated bricks, then you're screwing in, in the air, basically, in the void. So you need to find a solution. So one option is, so unfortunately you cannot use PVC for that. So you have to work uh, with the steel because you don't have enough bending resistance with PVC. But this then again equips you with the required strength. Or you take a completely different route. So maybe you're even further close to the masonry edge then you could also use angles. This doesn't change in terms of physics. However, the fixation or attachment suddenly becomes very good. Why? Well, you have the advantage that you can drill from the outside into the masonry. So you are meeting more and more depths within the brick, if you will, which gives you significantly higher load transfer. Tight or ceiling um, remains difficult and insulation needs to be guaranteed, but your attachment or fixation is significantly safer. This is what it could look like, relatively easy to mount, simple but good. So you can use those angles and you have the proper load transfer. So this one is also available with in various versions. So maybe you also have already seen um, examples here on the tracer with high pressed or high compressed polystyrene. So here again, we also encounter some advantages. Usually, if you were to go with a multifunction this wall, then you have um, everything that you need because of the additional frame. Um, you have everything you need. You can plane with your, you can uh, calculate your installation joints. 
and with insulation then you have everything you need as well because this way how the insulation works in this constellation gives you a proper surface um, temperature and it's easy to mount so you can just use your normal screws it works so you can tell those are systems that are basically adhesed, adhered um, to the system And then it's so, and at the top you have three fixation screws to be safe, so that you have a little bit of like if the adhesive fails, then you have a little bit of extra security. But basically, you're good to go. This is what it looks like. So you make sure that you apply the adhesive so that you that it contributes to air tightness. And then you have a sound system. Or you use those frames, those assembly frames. In terms of installation, there's not that much of a different than the standard installation. But they spread out the entire process, which is a benefit. You can beforehand mount it to the mount the frame you can have all other trades doing their job and then you can install the window and everything's done so it's really easy going this also leads to the fact that you have less complaints so very often we get complaints because we have scratches in the element because there's plaster um spots on the glass you are the last one to finish off the construction process by installing your window. And that is the advantage of such pre-assembly or pre-mounting frames. So this is really good in terms of coordinating with the other trades. There are numerous variations that you can choose from. You can order the frame from somewhere else. You have a system where you have the circumferential frame, which is running around the entire wind window. And I mean, of course, we can discuss whether this is a benefit or actually a disadvantage because you're not involved in the mounting anymore. And also this frame is produced, is then delivered by a crane onto the construction site. Masonry works are not accomplished yet. So um, you, it, is worked, it worked in into the carcass. So it's a completely different approach, but um, it works and it gives you what you want. So a little bit of uh, information from the TR20. How can we prove proper fixation? Usually dimensioning in terms of statistics was only recommended. So when you knew from experience that something worked, you could just continue with that approach. And now it is clear, it is stipulated that dimensioning of the attachment is necessary and a requirement. And this is good, I told you, because the situation has changed and the conditions have changed and we need to think about how we attach our window systems. How does this work? So it is easy in um, practice, basically. So you have different loads that exert force on the window. So the dead load, additional load, maybe you have some shutters, a ventilation device. You have the wind load that you cannot really see, right? And very often people tend to neglect them, but they do exert pressure. So for example, if you're mounting the window and then you're moving it around and you're checking whether it's moving around, maybe this works, but with this movement and the force that you apply back and forth while standing, if you're strong, you have roughly 30 kilograms, right? A wind load, as we experience it in Germany, can exert 200 kilograms per square meter. So this is incomparable. So you should take into account wind loads. Snow loads or ice loads, no, if, uh, only if you talk about roof windows. 
I think what is also very often underestimated um, is the load while the um, windows operated in, particular in public um, buildings, for example, for example, in schools. Then, for example, you have horizontal loads because you're holding onto the window while you're cleaning it. This gives you a certain uh, leverage. And so extreme forces that apply. And then, of course, movable parts. We need to make sure that we secure against um, the load transfer if the window is moved by, for example, being open and closed. So we need to find out, okay, how much load is actually applied to the different attachment or fixation points. Once you have identified that, this brings you to the last step. So you approach your fixation manufacturer. Usually they should have these kind of tables available. You can see the different masonry stones. You should, of course, know which masonry stone is used for your particular project. Here, for example, we have concrete. Um, and then we have this particular screw with a load transfer of um, 85 kilograms. This is already quite good if you screw in 40 millimeters. So if you have um, lime, sand lime brick of a strength class 12, which is usually equated to strength class 20, um, you have the corresponding numbers of the uh, screws. If you look at particular concrete types, then you can see that the load increases, but you have to see the, or you have to take into account the screw depth. Here we are already at 160 millimeters, so you have a longer screw. So this is something that we have to take into account. It gets even worse than when you move away from aerated concrete of a different uh, and move to one of a different strength, then you have an even higher screw depth that is required. Right. It's also interesting in terms of price if you calculate it. So you have um, a direct attachment through 100 pieces 7.5 times 132 this gives you 60 euros now you have the lightweight perforated brick and you calculate accordingly and suddenly you have to use the 302 um, screw this already brings you to 475 euros so this means we are at such an individual level that you have to have proper planning and cannot only plan according to linear meter. So we have the window construction tool with which you can simulate every mounting situation and this helps you to plan it in detail. I just wanted to give you this information. So this, because here we have a difference of 450 euro, right? With other screw manufacturers or dowel manufacturers, you can also find those tables. Basically, this is just the same in terms of information. You can see for every masonry stone, the kilogram of load that the screw can transfer. So sand line perforated break brings us to 25 kilogram per fixation point. So this really gets tight. I mean, if you have those high lift and sliding um, elements, those balcony doors, you really have to have proper calculation. There are metal frame dowels, which I find relatively hard to mount because everything needs to fit perfectly, especially with the nut. But this is in, particularly, in particular indispensable if you're talking about fire protection. So here we have a PVC frame dowel. It has been CE certified, so it can be used for safety relevant to safety critical attachments. So this means you have to have higher safety or security so you can see how the loads are shrinking. So with concrete, we're only at 60 uh, kilogram with a 50 millimeter screw depth. And if we now move on to the sand line brick, we're only at 10 kilograms. So really, we have to look at that in detail. So then we also have the spacer screw. Difficult to find data for them. 
because it is always applied with downloads. So we would have to look in the catalog what the DAO is able to perform in order to get the information for the space and mounting screw. Here we can at least see that concrete is performing better once again. So it really depends on the individual possibilities. So now this is not a traditional window mounting screw, but I showed you the angles before. So if you put it from outside in the masonry, then you could use this one. And this helps you to have proper uh, load transfer with those high performance anchors, 360 kilogram, 475 kilogram. So this is really where you can make a difference, but you have to have the right masonry to screw into, obviously. So this was a lot of information, obviously. So the question is, can any normal trade business deliver this kind of performance and actually you would have to say no for such as for usual or for the traditional SMEs in terms of trade it would be too much effort and too much work so and because this is very detailed work and it higher requires a high degree of expertise but we also have the solution once again this brings us back to the window construction tool this is what it looks like it's a little bit difficult to read but I guess you get the idea here to the top left, you have the dimensions of the window, width and height. You have the pane thickness. Then you can adjust or select which kind of stone you want to use for the masonry. This is connected to a database. So we can also take into account security against falling. We can determine the position, whether it's close to the masonry edge or further away. And depending on what you enter, you get a suggestion for the most suitable fixation element. So it's really easy and straightforward. I don't want to say that you can just have your intern working with that and you always get the right information. But if you take a little bit of time to work yourself into it and know how to operate it, then it is really helpful. And I think then it can be a great support for those SMEs in trade. Here at the bottom, you can see in green, this is feasible. You can use this fixation at some points, but we have also some fixation points, for example, the H1 point. So the screw at the corner, this is always the most critical because this is where the wings jivels out or swings out. And this is where you get the entire wing load being transferred. So in this case, this fixation solution wouldn't work anymore. But of course, you can um, use an additional fixation if possible. So an additional one at the top at the bottom corner. And if it's not possible because, I don't know, it's brick and open masonry, then in a, with a distance of 100 millimeters, you can enter the next screws. And then you already have a low transfer to those two screws, 70, 30, for example, or in this case here, 50, 50. So you already halved your loads. And this very often brings you to where you want to be. So with this tool, you're very flexible. You have 100% planning security. So this is what it looks like. We don't have the module for window attachment, but I think 38 additional ones where you can make great use of if you're a window construction company and you can simplify your process so be it about ventilation technology, be it about construction uh, calculation, you can draft ventilation concepts, you can determine glass thickness, you can calculate mounting costs. And this eases things up for those constructing and installing windows. If you're a member company, you get this for free, or you can buy an annual license to get your own planning security with this tool. So I think this brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. And if there are any questions, I'm of course happy to answer them.